Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. If I could have order at the council, please. Uh, Madam Clerk, we have no regrets. Uh, council, do we have any declarations of pecuniary interest? Thank you. Um, I, uh, I call your attention then to your agenda where you have no consent items, public or confidential. And our first item is a public hearing item on uh, the Dunpar developments. And the purpose of this uh, meeting is uh, for the benefit of the public, is to hear the comments of the public and uh, staff will then take those into account in crafting a recommendation report, which will come to council at a later time. Uh, so uh, that's just to clear up that no decisions being made on this application tonight, just receipt of uh, comments from the public. And to start that off, we're going to have a summary from our planner. Well, it's not there. I don't think we need to. Oh, you're right. Council, how about a mover and seconder to resolve in a committee of the whole? Councilor Lapworth, thank you. Councilor Knoll, thank you. All in favor? Opposed to any. There you have committee of the whole. Now you can, you can let your hair down and be really relaxed. And uh, if you'll turn your attention to Trish Collingwood. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Burton and she members of council. Tonight I'm presenting the plan of subdivision and plan of condominium for Dunpar Developments, Inc. The application includes the properties at 2158, 2168, 2180, and 2192 Trafalgar Road and proposes a plan of subdivision and plan of condominium to accommodate the development of 113 four-story townhouse units. Applications for official plan and zoning bylaw amendments were submitted in August of last year. Those applications were presented to the Planning and Development Council on November 12, 2012. The subject lands are, are located south of Glen Ashton along Trafalgar Road, which has been identified as a busway corridor in the Livable Oak, Oakville plan. This total site is 1.65 hectares, and two of the three houses on the properties have been removed. The surrounding uh, land uses are as follows. To the north, there's existing commercial uses, a daycare center, chiropractic, and dental office. To the east is Trafalgar Row in an established residential neighborhood. To the south is a detached dwelling, a dog kennel, and a place of worship. And to the west is vacant land, which has received final plan of subdivision approval to build 51 single detached, dwell to build 51 single detached dwellings. The applicant seeks approval to permit the lands to be developed for a subdivision and to create a standard condo that would include high density residential uses, visitor parking, common landscape features, and private lanes associated with the 113 common element townhouse development. The applicant proposes to access the subject lands from the future municipal and um, future municipal road located to the northwest that is planned uh, to be constructed through the approved Kilberry Holdings development. Currently, the land is designated low density residential within the Livable Oakville plan. The 70 units per site hectare proposed in the application is considered high density residential. The town has initiated the Trafalgar Road Corridor Planning Study as identified in the, in the uh, Livable Oakville. The purpose of the study is to evaluate and recommend intensification opportunities, as well as the appropriate densities, built form, and mix of land uses along Trafalgar Road. The study has been advanced to allow the results of the study to inform the town's position with respect to this application. A public open house was held on June 24th for the, for the corridors planning study to introduce the study area and purpose of the study to stakeholders. It is anticipated that the study will be completed by the end of 2013. Currently, the lands are zoned agricultural. Propo um, the applicant's proposing a multi-attached multi residential zone, R8 zoning, more appropriate for the higher density townhouse built form. In March of this year, the applicant submitted an appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board dealing with the re related official plan and zoning bylaw amendment applications. The town is looking to coordinate the timing of the pre-hearing dates for late August, plan for late August. 
the completion of the Trafalgar Road Corridor Planning Study, and bringing forward a report dealing with all, with all applications to a Planning and Development Council meeting before a potential OMB hearing date in 2014. Whoops. Comments received at both the public information meeting and the statutory public meeting for, um, for the official plan and zoning bylaw amendments include the conformity with livable Oakville, compatibility with surrounding uses, including the intensity of the use and the height of the proposed buildings, impacts to the future development of adjacent lots, affordability of residential units, transportation that includes transit, in, transit support of development, traffic impacts, and road improvements, site design and design of the units, especially along Trafalgar Road, timing of the application's recommendation report, of the, yeah, the application's recommendation report in relation to the completion of the Trafalgar Road Corridor Planning Study, including the evaluation and recommendation of the future development potential of the adjacent lots. Finally, stormwater management. At the time of this report, no technical issues have been raised with regard to the subject applications. The next steps include um, incorporating all public comments during the review and the analysis of the application and into the recommendation report, completion of the Trafalgar Road Corridor Planning Study, and bringing forward the recommendation report to a future Planning Development Council meeting. Recommendation of the staff report is that comments from the public meeting, ooh, this one's tricky. Comments from the public meeting with respect to the plan of subdivision and plan of condominiums submitted by Dunpar Developments, Inc. be received. Thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, synopsis. Uh, Council, do you have any questions? Councilor Elgar? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the question of uh, noise walls, uh, what, what, uh, what's the story on noise walls in that area? In this area? It yes. hasn't been raised as part of this application at this time. Are you speaking of across the street with the existing residential or the, the kennel and the existing bungalow that's to the south? Well, I, I, I'm just thinking going forward with, uh, with Trafalgar Road and the traffic on it. In general? Uh, with regard to whether that would be, going forward, if that would be part of uh, something that would be considered and who would pay for the noise wall against Trafalgar Road. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the, a noise wall along this section of Trafalgar Road wouldn't be considered um, at this time. It, we're trying to c uh, complete a built form streetscape look along Trafalgar Road that would lend to increased transit use. So the noise wall would sort of go against that. I appreciate that. When people move in and back onto Trafalgar Road, they may think it's important. That's all I'm just, I just think that. Uh, the, the further down south there are noise walls. I was just trying to figure out why we're not considering it there. Being a regional road, I would assume that that would be something we would have to talk with the region about during their EA process, which is going on right now. That, that is Trump. In that card game, that's, that's a Trump card. Uh, Madam Director, did you still want to say anything? Um, through your worship to Councillor Elgar, I was just going to add that um, based on the form of use that's proposed, I don't believe a noise wall would be required given that it would be a medium density form. So there wouldn't be a rear yard amenity space um, backing on to the road. And in fact, that's not a, a form as, as um, Tricia indicated that we would promote along that proximity to a regional road. So we would looking, be looking at front yards at a minimum, but in this form they would be medium density. Other questions? All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the delegation? Yes, we have uh, Mr. Pierre Girard representing uh, River Oaks Association of Residents. Welcome, Mr. Girard. Council looks forward to your comments and questions. And if you could address that microphone, it'll assist people at home to hear, from, uh, to hear what you say. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I don't think this is loud enough. <laughs> um, I think I may be repeating some of the comments that you've received before, but uh, let, let me do repeat some of these on behalf of the uh, Association of uh, Residents at River Oaks. Um, the, the, the first comment will be uh, certainly about the blocks, the, the three blocks of uh, apartments which will be facing 
the uh, houses which are being built right now, which seems a little bit out of place, being four stories versus uh, a two story, uh, I think they're million dollar houses, at least they're advertised as such. So it's, it seems a little out of place. Uh, we do have townhomes in the area, but there are three stories and they're across the street. Uh, the second point is, uh, and again, this is a repeat, is the, uh, uh, we don't know how the Trafalgar corridor is going to be changed or um, improved or whatever. So it does raise a concern that this is going a little too fast. We are talking about 113 housing units. Uh, plus there's 51 uh, houses going in the area. I know there may be a road down this side, but right now from the plan and from the information that I have at the moment, it would seem that uh, everybody would have to uh, come out through uh, River Oaks Boulevard, which seems an awful congestion in the morning during rush hour, especially there's no stop on uh, on River Oaks itself, uh, no lights there, so I would see that as a certainly a congestion problem that people will have to face with, uh, including whoever's moving in there. Uh, the other point is that uh, since we're gathering comments, I would have hoped that uh, uh, the company, Dunbar Development, which take these into consideration. I was kind of surprised to get a, uh, a notice of, uh, uh, from the OMB that they're, they're trying to push this through uh, already. Uh, without the, the discussions being uh, going through and without the city looking at it. So it puts us in a... Uh, and the position that we kind of have to oppose this with the OMB till at least some of these issues get settled between the, the, the development company and the city. Uh, rest of the comments I will not uh, repeat because I think you've seen them all uh, at various meetings. So that sums it up as far as uh, the association goes. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, can you say though on the, the other comments that you're not repeating, uh, are you implying that your association also supports those comments too? I mean, uh, I'm just trying to get a... Uh... In general, yes. Okay. Um, the other comments um, are more minor for us compared to uh, uh, the ones I've just elaborated on. Okay. Uh, certainly uh, uh, transition and prematurity and traffic impacts uh, are the three I heard. They yes. are big ones. Thank you. So I see no questions. Thanks very much for your information. Councillor, did you have your hand up? Yes. Yeah, I did a point of clarification for staff when uh, the delegation is finished. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Mr. Girard. Councillor Noll. Uh, thank you. Through you to staff, I just want to clarify, Mr. Girard was indicating apartments being across from uh, the Kilbury Homes. Uh, th there are no apartments proposed for this, are there? What is the built form? The built form uh, that's proposed is townhouses, four how stories. Many, how many levels? Four stories. They are four stories, so they're, yeah. but they're not apartments. They're actually townhouses, single family in townhouses. Okay, thank you. I just want to be clear on that. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, oh, there are no other listed delegations. Are there any other members of the public with information for Council on this? Or anyone else who'd like to offer a comment for Council? All right, I'll look to Councillor Knoll for a motion. Oh, sorry. Is there a hand? Oh, yes. Well, yes, please come down. Please identify yourself. I'm sorry I didn't see your, your hand. It was a little low. Well, thank you, Your Worship and members of Council. Uh, my name is Paul Roser. I'm a 40-year resident of the town of Oakville and a current resident uh, of River Oaks, actually. Um, I'm uh, actually quite intrigued by the, the Dunpar development. I, um, in terms of business and other things, uh, spend quite a bit of time in Etobicoke, which is uh, Dunpar's sort of home, home turf, I guess, uh, and I've seen a number of their developments there that I've been quite impressed with, the, the finished form, and uh, you know, it seems that uh, including the designs I've seen of this proposed project, um, they seem to be um, 
a really, uh, I guess, an impressive design, you know, sort of um, a, a stately kind of design. And it's, it's uh, actually a project that I'm quite interested in as an Oakville resident of potentially, uh, if and when they get to that point of maybe even looking at uh, residing in this development. But I wanted to, uh, I guess, just express that I, from my understanding of the plans for the town, we're talking intensification, which is one of the goals for the province and you know, others, certainly um, townhouses would fit with that. Um, I understand the detached homes next door, but you know, we're, it's all about mixed use, which Oak Park itself is, uh, between the townhomes there and the, the mid-rises, I guess high-rises. Um, so I really just wanted to put forward my comments there that I actually find this, this development uh, to be something that I think would fit in with, with the Trafalgar Corridor and with the River Oaks Oak Park area. And that would be my comment. <laughs> Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I wonder a, if, um, well, I think we appreciate them very much. Thank you very much okay. for that. Um, that's I think that's it. There's no questions from us, sir. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, another member of the public with comments for council? I think it's you. Pretty. Please introduce yourself and share your comments. Good evening. My name is Bill Tan from the firm KLM Planning. I'm actually on here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, first of all, we wish to thank uh, staff and council for allowing us the opportunity to, uh, allowing us the opportunity to hear from our neighbors and listen to what they have to say about our proposal. Um, there was nothing really specific to add to the staff report because we believe the staff report and the presentation was for, was very comprehensive. But if I may, just a couple of clarification points. After hearing from the other members of the uh, of other members of the public, I know there was an issue with regards to the four stories being uh, being called into question. Just wanted to note that the top story is actually inset into the uh, the roof line, so it's actually more closer to three to three and a half stories actually. And as has been indicated, the units which are facing on to the uh, draft approved plan to the west of us, they are indeed uh, townhouses and not apartments. Thank you. The councillor has a question for you. you. The way you led up to that, I thought you had a question. Um, so my question actually relates to uh, what Councillor Algar was talking about earlier, and that's noise. Um, there clearly will be some kind of uh, noise issues uh, you know, in the future with Trafalgar becoming busier and busier as time goes on. Will there be any consideration given to um, any kind of design elements which would, within the units themselves, to help mitigate noise impacts? Is there something already in the works? Do you have something in mind that you would, whether it be additional glazing, additional, I don't know, some sort of insulation in the building to help deal with that? Because Councillor Elgar is right. You know, we deal with the, you know, after you guys are long gone, <laughs> we're the ones picking up the pieces because people are saying, you know, there's so much noise in my home, I can't even sleep, et cetera, et cetera. So. Is there anything that's being considered? Is there anything that can be considered? Can you take that back to your colleagues to, uh, um, to consider uh, what that might look like 10, 15 years down the road when you're long gone and we're still dealing with the residents that are, are left behind dealing with the noise? I believe we, we all have to look at that, uh, the situation, the possible noise impacts upon Trafalgar Road. But I also want to mention because yeah, of the exciting. wall treatment or the mm -hmm. wall form that we're proposing on Trafalgar Road, the buildings themselves will act as a noise barrier uh, to partially shield the development that's already uh, approved to the west of us as well. So the buildings themselves act somewhat as a, as a wall barrier. As for the units themselves right along Trafalgar, I believe we will have to look at that as well. Yeah, well the, the ones along Trafalgar will act as a nice barrier for the ones beyond, so we don't exactly. want to have that. We want to have something for them as well. Um, on the same noise issue, to the immediate south of the property, we've had ongoing discussions about the dog kennel um, that exists there, Wagaway Kennels. Have you had further conversations with uh, the owner of that property in terms of uh, how we will uh, mitigate the impacts both of um, uh, your new development on that site but also of the dogs on that site so it doesn't, beca it doesn't become a, a uh, foregone conclusion that there will be ongoing complaints. Have there been discussions at this point? And if uh, so, is, is, is it a time when you can divulge any of that information or is it still has, a work in progress? There have been discussions. Um, do you have anything to add? There, ha there have been discussions with the representatives from the uh, from the applicant. Okay, but, and we'll hear about that later, I assume. Okay, okay, but progress is good. Thank you very much. 
I just have a question for you uh, with respect to um, the degree to which you're contemplating cooperating with the Trafalgar Road Corridor Planning Study. Oh. I shall defer to the council. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. My name is Mary Flynn Guglietti, and I'm the solicitor acting on behalf of Dunpar. And uh, perhaps maybe I can answer that question and a couple of the other questions that have already been asked. With respect to the noise issue, we do have to do a noise study. And if you look through the planning report, it does recommend that even though we have a plan of subdivision, a plan of condominium, an official plan amendment, and zoning, we also have site plan approval. And that those levels of detail but will be taken care of there. But certain recommendations that are usually made in these circumstances are things like double glazing of the windows and things like that. And we will adhere to the recommendations that flow from that noise report. And we know that we do have to do that. We know that Trafalgar is a busy road and we have to sell the units. So we have to, you know, build into those units certain things that will make them attractive. The nice thing is that you're living on a street that's going to have um, higher order public transportation, which is a real selling feature. But at the same time, you have to mitigate against the noise. So. Um, I can tell you that Dunpar has a number of developments that are on major roads and they're very well aware of how to, to attenuate that, that type of situation. So it is for a later part, but I can assure you this developer has that experience and has certainly knows how to deal with that. Um, I believe that, just trying to look at some of the other questions, oh, with respect to the dog kennel. On the issue of the dog kennel, my client has had discussions with the owner of that property and um, in those discussions, we have certainly uh, indicated to her that we're prepared to work with her. There may need to be a fence on that side that would, you know, good fences make good neighbors. So we have indicated to that particular landowner that we're prepared to work with them. And I do believe the um, comments from Western Consulting um, very much so I, I think is an important issue in that the townhomes will definitely act as a noise barrier. <laughs> To the, to the estate homes um, immediately abutting. So that's going to be an attractive feature. That'll be a nice transition between those homes and, of course, Trafalgar Road. And I'd be prepared to ask, answer any other questions that you might have. I think the other one, if I'm not mistaken, was with respect to the timing of the Trafalgar Road study. Um, after submitting our application to the, um, the Ontario Municipal Board, we did um, convene a meeting with the city solicitor for, um, pardon me, the town solicitor for Oakville. And as well, we also had a meeting at the same time with Mr. Beck, who is the solicitor for the region. And we discussed the timing and the way that it's gonna work is that August 26 is the first pre-hearing. Um, the anticipation is that there will be a second pre-hearing in October. And hopefully by that time, I believe that there's a report anticipated on the Trafalgar Road, uh, Road Study sometime in September or early October that would then feed in very nicely to our second pre-hearing, at which time hopefully we'll have more information about how that study is, is progressing. And then of course the anticipation is that the hearing itself will be held not until the new year, January sometime. So we're hoping that the two are going to converge nicely together. Uh, the study, I think the terms of reference has, has been in place since the beginning of this year, and the study is ongoing now. There was also an EA for Trafalgar Road, which I believe that um, the, pu the first public meeting on that was held in June of 2013. So we are hoping that these two things will merge together and work fairly well together. That's, that's what's anticipated. Thank you very much for clearing that up. Um, any other questions, Councillor Elgar? Yeah, uh, thank you for stepping forward and clearing up a few things. My question is, it's always, it's the aftermath of what we deal with at council. And I'm trying to figure out how, how we as council can be assured that residents looking to buy the property are fully aware of the dog kennel so that afterwards we don't have a lot of people coming out stating the dog kennel has to go because we're here now. Like, how can we be in, how, how, how can you make me feel comfortable that in fact those residents are going with their eyes wide open of what they have there? Um, through you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Elgar, what I can tell you is that it, it's 
there's a number of things that happen. One is the construction. You make sure that it's all the units are air conditioned as well that they have the, the double-paned double, double paned windows. In addition to that, you can put warning clauses in the plan of subdivision. You can put warning clauses as well in the condominium documents. Um, the same as if you were building close to a railway um, or, you know, sometimes they put them in for schools, people that have to be bused as opposed to, like, you're not going to have a school next door, so we're telling you right now when you're buying the unit. Those type of things can be put right in the critical documents that any purchaser would have to review and be fully aware of before buying a unit. So certainly that's something that we're used to dealing with and certainly something that we can build into the documents. I appreciate that. I know it's built in, but it's awfully hard to get the people to realize what they've bought until they physically get in the residence and then realize what, what's around them. So Understood. I guess we'll, as we go forward, we'll hear more of that. Thank you. Well, I, she's going to make them read them too. Councillor Knoll. Perhaps you could just have some dogs in a kennel in the sales, uh, in the sales <laughs> pavilion to demonstrate the noise impacts. I, don't know. Um, I just wanted to, <clears throat> one of the questions that was, or one of the concerns raised um, from a member of the public uh, earlier was with respect to, um, um, I guess, million dollar homes on one side of the street and townhouses on the other. Can you comment on, I, I guess, the, and now we heard from another member of the, uh, the audience or for another constituent that had indicated that he's familiar with the product in Etobicoke. Can you comment on the, um, uh, I guess on the market, who, who the market are, what the, what the design elements would be like? Is there, a, is there a, uh, an appropriate transition, uh, architectural trend? I mean, obviously there will not be, there'll be an issue around height that will be subject to interpretation or subject to uh, uh, very um, personal viewpoints, but in terms of the, the architectural transitions, what will that look like? Thank you very much. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Noel. I, I can only say that when you sort of do urban planning in a broad, broad brush stroke way of looking at urban planning, you usually see single family, then you see medium density townhouses, and then we move into apartments. And so really, uh, townhouses really are the ideal buffer um, when you're moving through that transition. And certainly when you're looking at a major road like Trafalgar, you don't want to have single family homes there. When you have single family homes there, then you have to build the single loaded street, then you have to put up the, um, uh, up the big noise walls, and it's not a very attractive, it's not very inviting. When you want to create a kind of a neighborhood where you're in, invited out onto the street to take the public transit and, and to use the commercial entities that are on the street, the best way to do that is, is to have a transition, and the townhouses really invite that transition. And certainly one of the things that when you're dealing with a developer who has a number of products out there, it's always great to say, we'd be more than happy when we come forward in the future for more of the detail, is to provide you with all sorts of photos of the existing Dunpar, and you'll see that one of the ones I'd like to give an example is on Islington Avenue in, um, in Etobicoke, and as you're going down Islington Avenue, that's a major arterial road as well. It has major uh, buses that take you up to the subway on Islington and Bloor. But as you're going down the street, there are single family on this side, and then there are the townhouses on this side. And if, if I could maybe get the planner to put some of the plans back up, there is a road that will be separated. So they're not back-to-back -back situations. There will be a public road. And so if you, if you go out into Etobicoke and you see that in a number of the other townhomes, you'll see that that's not an unusual circumstance. And actually, to have the road... Um, as acting as the buffer in between as your transition and then you have your major arterial road. It, it really is the preferred way to deal with that. And as I said earlier, um, in terms of the quality of the product, and I think the other gentleman had spoken about it himself, it's a very high quality product. I mean, usually these units sell for, you know, 650 plus. So it's not, um, these are not a low end product. They're actually, they may be townhomes, but they're they're very high-end townhomes and very attractive. And we'd be more than happy to put together a, a package of the other townhome projects that they've worked on, and we could circulate that to the council members and any of the public that are interested in seeing them. But I think, I think you'll be very happy with the product, very, very high quality. I would appreciate that, and we could potentially also circulate it to, uh, to River Oaks Association of Residents, too, so they can see that. A uh, last point, um, you would, when you started uh, your presentation, you referred to comments by Weston Consulting. Um, I'm curious what you're referring to, because I wasn't, I'm, I'm not aware that oh. Weston is party to this application. Oh, no, they're our planning consultant. And, oh, they are? And, uh, yes, and uh, Bill spoke first, and so I came up after Bill and said I was hoping to answer some of the questions more fully. Than Bill did. The vice president of Weston is sitting right there and he's shaking his head. 
<laughs> KLM. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, KLM. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. We appreciate the referral. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. I'm sure that uh, Kurt would be happy to sign you up on the way out if you want. <laughs> My mistake. I apologize. <laughs> but it was so believable. <laughs> so sincere. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for the information. Thank you. And uh, I'll now ask again if there's anyone else here with information. And I see one more hand. Please come on down, introduce yourself, share your information. Hello, my name is uh, Michael Hayden. I wasn't actually planning on speaking tonight, but since uh, the subject of the kennel came up, uh, I thought I would address that. I'm uh, with, uh, along with my wife, I'm the owner of the kennel. We've been operating it for about uh, 14 or 15 years. Um, we obviously would like to not see any development around, uh, uh, around the neighborhood, uh, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, more particularly, um, the, uh, uh, the interruption to our business from you know, potential residents in the neighborhood. Uh, there has been some casual conversation uh, at the, the information meeting with uh, Dunpar regarding um, uh, fences, uh, and our position is that we wanted to have uh, some type of concrete uh, noise barrier uh, between the, the new uh, uh, townhomes and and our property. Um, FYI, we haven't had a complaint uh, regarding noise in 14 years. So, um, like, we're more concerned that our residents or our, our guests will be uh, adversely affected by the, the noise traffic and, uh, you know, around there. Um, having said that, um, I believe I've seen this would be the third set of plans in the 14 years that, that I've been there. People sort of come by and they, they you know draw up some plans and they say this is what we want to do et cetera et cetera and and they never um, I guess they've never really got to this point to my knowledge um, and I actually view that sort of corridor as a bit of a horror show um, you know it's vacant uh, the houses are well there's two of the houses are down but the houses are old there's issues with the houses there's usually issues with the tenants um, so. Having said that, I'm favorably disposed to this uh, to this um, development, given you know some safeguards. Uh, I drive by that one property that they refer to uh, on Islington almost every day on my way to Toronto, and it it is a nice property. I've, I've visited it a couple times. Um, it you know I, I think they do a bang up job, but um, we are interested in a, a concrete. Uh, barrier, noise barrier. We are interested in um, something uh, in the sales literature for sure. And um, we have on two occasions uh, put up our own signs advising um, potential purchasers, you know, who would obviously walk by the site, uh, that there is a dog kennel. And uh, although I don't believe that there's an issue, um, you know, with regard to the dogs, um, you know, potentially there could be. So uh, I just wanted to address that if you had any questions. Thank you very much for bringing us that information. Any questions? Thank you very much, sir, for your time and your information. Anyone else? Thank you. I'll look to Councillor Knoll. Your Worship, I'm pleased to uh, give you the motion that's recommended by staff on page one of the report, number one. Thank you, Councillor. All in favor? Opposed to any? And carried. And that brings us to item number two, which is the recommendation report for the Coptic Orthodox Church. And if you'll give your attention to Paul Demchik, he will give you a brief summary of the file you've read. And this will assist the public in keeping up with us here. Good evening, Mayor Byrne and members of council. Uh, staff are bringing forward a recommendation report for the zoning amendment application at 1177 Victor Drive for the additional use of a private school within the existing, uh, within the existing building. So the property is located at the eastern end of Invicta Drive, uh, as seen in the, uh, the, uh, the air photo attached. Um, I've attached a few elevations of what is proposed in terms of what the future building is going to look like, what is, go what is going to look like. So in terms of what's existing uses, there's, a, there's an existing uh, Coptic Orthodox Church that is in, currently in operation within the building, as well as a day nursery. Um, they've been in operation since 2011. 
um, the, they're looking at adding the additional use of a private school within that facility. There's another elevation. The official plan designates the property as uh, business employment. Um, in terms of uh, private schools, private schools um, and employment areas can be considered under Section 7 of the official plan, which deals with the community use policies. Um, moving forward, as noted that there's a number of applications um, within uh, the Invicta Drive, I guess, neighborhood um, that are coming forward uh, that are we're currently processing. Um, currently, you see the one at the end of Invicta Drive 1177. Um, that is the one before us right now. There's also uh, 1132 Invicta Drive, um, which is the existing um, La La Toronto Rock Lacrosse facility. They are looking at adding uh, a private school use, a separate building on that property. And then finally, 1155 Invicta Drive, which is currently a vacant lot, but they have submitted a site plan application and they are looking at uh, building a four-story uh, hotel uh, use, which is uh, more or less going to uh, be form and function and, and kind of work with the, uh, the Toronto Rock Lacrosse School, uh, Hill Academy School, which I'll be addressing at a later presentation tonight. Um, but just on that note, um, so staff um, do note that the private school uh, within the existing place of worship meets the objectives and conforms to the community use policies of the Livable Oakville official plan. Uh, the private school use is being accommodated within the existing building and is of a scale that does not adversely impact the existing and planned employment function of the area. Um, one of the criteria of the uh, community use policies is that it basically looks at um, connecting with the broader community and one concern that staff did have with this application as well as the other application is potential uh, pedestrian infrastructure. Um, not being available right now on Invicta Drive and being able to connect to the North Service Road. Um, there is a North Service Road uh, sidewalk um, being um, developed later this year, I believe. Um, so with that, we were looking at potential connections. So before you is a revised uh, memo related to this report, which looks for a council resolution, um, basically to um, allow staff to secure for that pedestrian connection. Uh, in terms of the zoning, uh, again, the zoning is currently uh, E1. Um, we are looking at adding the special uh, provision of 876, which would allow for the private school use in, a, in addition to the existing uses, um, as well as provide for a site-specific um, uh, parking calculation. Um, they have submitted, the applicant has submitted a traffic report, which looks at the um, uh, blended uh, parking considerations of all three uses being working on the site and uh, staff uh, have no issues with that parking report. So just in terms of key facts, a public meeting was held on February 4th, 2013 and no formal public comments were received on this application. No concerns, again, were raised by any commenting agency. Uh, planning staff has no objection to the proposed zoning amendment as the application conforms to the overall policy direction of Liverpool Oakville and the, it is further noted that the design details will be further addressed um, which include landscaping, buffering, um, those kind of matters through the site plan review process. So Thank staff you. are recommending that the uh, zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by the Coptic Orthodox Church be approved, um, that a condition of site plan approval for the property be required for appropriate arrangements to be made to secure for the construction of the sidewalk improvements on Victor Drive um, to address these pedestrian co connectivity matters, and that bylaw 2013-050 as revised uh, before you be passed. Thank you very much for the uh, synopsis. Are there questions, uh, Council? Are there members of the public with information for Council on this matter? Council, I'll look to you. Sorry? Oh, wait, we have a registered delegation. Uh, that's the applicant. You're here in case there's questions? Yes, I just wanted to say thank you um, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, staff has worked expeditiously on this, and thank you to Councillors Khan and Adams for responding to our request. So you're in support of the recommendation? We're in support of the recommendation, and the planner is here as well as the applicant in case there are any questions. Okay. Thank you. All right, then I'll look for a motion. Councillor Kahn. Uh, I'll move the uh, staff recommendation. All right, the revised recommendation by staff, which has been circulated to you, is moved by the councillor. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. That does carry. And uh, thank you very much. Now, if we will give our attention back to Paul. He'll take you to the uh, Hill Academy application, which uh, he kind of foreshadowed in his last report. 
So similar to the previous application, uh, the town is in receipt of a zoning amendment application for a private school use on the property. Um, the difference with this one is that it's not within the existing building. They are proposing a new building on the, uh, the subject property. So if you look at the site plan attached, you can see the existing Toronto Rock lacrosse facility, which is, I guess, uh, further up on the screen. And then there's an L-shaped building um, on the, I guess, southwest corner of the property, which is the proposed Hill Academy uh, private school. Um, here's a few elevations of the proposed uh, building. Um, so again, the property is designated business employment. And the, as mentioned before, there's uh, the existing uh, proposed um, development applications that I have uh, previously uh, addressed. Um, the application could be considered again through the community's policies and staff um, would recommend that uh, the application uh, be approved. Um, we are proposing a similar um, site-specific bylaw on the subject property with um, site-specific uh, parking calculations as well as queuing ratio. Um, so the key facts, public meeting was held on February 4th, no formal public comments were received, no concerns were raised by commenting agency and planning staff have no objection to the proposed zoning amendment. And the further design details will again be addressed through the site plan review process. Uh, staff are recommending approval and uh, that the conditions um, uh, included in that memo um, are passed as well as that bylaw 2013-049 as revised be passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any questions before I poll the audience? Any members of the public with information for the uh, council? I understand that Ashley Rivett is here from Weston. Um, I suppose we can ask you a question if you don't have one, which would be, are you in support of the recommendation? We certainly are, and we'd like to thank staff for their efforts in working through uh, the condition of site plan approval. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll look to the other member of the ward. I'll uh, be pleased to move the recommendation. The As councilor revised. moves the revised uh, recommendation circulated to you this evening. All those in favor? Opposed to any? And that carries. Well done, all. Um, brings us to item number four, which is uh, uh, Aaron Oak, Councillor Elgar. Your Worship, uh, Councillor Lapworth and I, we actually don't require a staff uh, presentation uh, at all. Uh, I think we're really happy that uh, they've chosen this location for us uh, in Oakville. Uh, it's providing 150 jobs. It's silver lead compliant. Uh, it's got 245 parking spaces, which are barrier-free. Uh, it's, it's extremely, well, it's right across from the new Oakville Hospital that is going in. This is just a good news story all the way around, and we'd be pleased to move it. I'll, um, I apologize to Rob Thun, who I, was, I believe was all geared up to brag about those things for you. But, uh, but yes, it certainly is a good news day for Oakville and for Aaron Oak and for the clients that they serve. Um, does the rest of council agree you don't want the presentation? Then it's, it's duly moved by the councillor. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. And congratulations to uh, Aaron Oak and to Oakville. Um, that brings us now to the subdivision process review report. And if you'll give your attention to Mr. Hanna, he'll update us on where we are in that process. Thank you, Your Worship, and um, members of Town Council. I'm very pleased tonight to give you an update on our subdivision process review. The topics I intend to cover briefly in my presentation are threefold, including background, uh, where we came from and where we are today. Also, we'll describe the improvements that are outlined in your report, um, including the conditions of draft plan approval, which is most of the focus of the report. And I'll also touch briefly on some administrative matters that relate to the process improvements that have also been made. And I'll close with some next steps. Uh, just in terms of background, Council will recall um, this initiative started with a workshop with Council back in March of 2010. It was the intent of that workshop to gain some feedback on the current subdivision approval process and a number of issues were identified and raised by Council and grouped under the headings in the review process, including the pre-consultation and submission requirements, things that are logically dealt with at draft approval and as a condition, uh, some of the concerns with the registration and construction and assumption processes. 
The two things I wanted to, to mention in looking back on that spreadsheet, there were a couple of themes that came through there, and that was the importance of communication throughout the process, and most importantly to prospective purchasers on what they're buying into. And there was also a number of issues that are raised typically by constituents during the construction and assumption process that were raised as uh, councils. And they're kind of under the heading of enforcing existing rules and regulations, and I threw a couple of examples on the slide for you, things like truck routing and parking and street cleaning. So we came back then in October of 2011 uh, with another staff report and coming out of that report, Council endorsed uh, an implementation strategy for this initiative and there were eight next steps and I don't intend to go over uh, those steps with you but they are summarized in the report um, that you have in front of you and I will be touching on a number of those steps tonight. The first uh, big one that the report talks about is, is conditions of draft plan approval, a new master list. Um, we were having some um, issues and problems with the list of conditions. It had expanded over the years to approximately 130. There was a bunch of duplication within the conditions. Um, there was also things that were being raised that were not really conditions, but they were statements. So it was very difficult to figure out how do you clear those conditions, who's gonna clear them, and it made for the approval and the registration process to be not as efficient uh, as it should be. So by looking at those issues, we took kind of a three-step process to coming up with a new master list. First of all, we did a bit of a best practice review of nine comparable municipalities that are listed in your report. And it was very interesting that a number of those municipalities were doing similar reviews to what we were. And the message coming out of that is the focus on council should be on really the consultation and decision making role that you have. And then the removing the routine administrative matters uh, to staff. So that's a, a theme that you're going to see tonight. The next thing we did was we, uh, we did a stakeholder consultation and it was a fairly in-depth. Uh, we actually circulated three drafts of the um, of the current list of, uh, of the master list that you now have in front of you to get feedback uh, from a number uh, of st in important stakeholders, review agencies, departments. We took it several times to the Oakville Developers Liaison, Liaison Committee and we had a number of discussions with individuals. What has led us then to today is an updated mess, uh, master list of conditions. And you'll notice that they have been uh, significantly reduced in number. They've been formatted by timing, uh, so you'll know what needs to be cleared first, or if you're a developer. And that was a, a clear message we got from the Oakville um, Developers Liaison Committee early on. Duplication has been rem removed. They've been simplified and hopefully clarified on how you fulfill them. And we've also done something very interesting. There's a, an Appendix B attached to your report where we've separated a number of conditions out into what would be logically inserted into a standard subdivision agreement. So the overall number of conditions has really been reduced from 130 to 41 with a separate approximately 50 that will end up being included in a standard subdivision agreement. So I also wanted to point out uh, before I head on to the, to the next level of improvements, that the master list that you have in front of you is not to say it's the be-all and end-all. Um, there still can be uh, specialized conditions that are recommended by staff and endorsed by you as part of any approval process. And not every condition may or may not apply to every application. So it's almost like a pick list where staff will bring forward based on comments it receives through the agency and, and plan review, the conditions that logically should apply and, and recommend that you endorse it. So over the next couple of slides, I just want to highlight a couple of other initiatives that have come out of, or that are highlighted in your report that are more administrative uh, in nature. The first one was a process mapping initiative. Uh, coming out of the, uh, the reorganization, um, we were uh, set up into a, a number of district planning teams and through that team, uh, through that organizational structure, we, we undertook to review some of our review processes uh, in terms of trying to create some efficiencies. So what we are doing now is we have regular pre-consultation and technical review committee meetings that occur every Wednesday afternoon with applicants, which has been a, uh, a good communication tool and beneficial to the approval process. We've just ended a, a significant upgrade to the folders um, 
that are considered to be, or our Amanda Five folders, which is an administrative software program that we use to trap applications. And the reason I raise that is the next step in that process may be the ability of applicants to go online and track their, uh, the approval or where they stand as far as the status of their applications. We've also done another of, uh, a number of updating administratively to application forms, uh, report and notice templates, and I'm, I'm sure you're seeing a bunch of consistency in reports as they're coming forward uh, in front of you. The next uh, administrative improvement that we've done related to the web website enhancement, um, you did receive a, um, a memo from the Director of Planning Services uh, June 12th, which outlined the website en enhancements, but it's all about improving access and information not only to yourself but also to the constituents. It's an interactive uh, development tracking piece by ward. Um, applicants or residents can go in and see where the applications are, review the concept and development plans on all the supporting uh, studies and also get contact information from staff. So that's been very beneficial. So again with the theme of communication, um, there was also an effort to improve the level of information to prospective purchasers, um, especially in the new uh, communities of North Oakville. Um, for those of you who have gone into the, the real details, you'll notice it's still condition 20 uh, of the master list of condition. It talks about information packages being required in the sales offices. They are prepared by the town, obviously, and funded by the developer. And uh, there was uh, a memo sent to you in April that talked about two recent examples uh, of those information packages. They get to get, or they provide information on land uses, street parking, bus routes, parks, trails, etc., uh, to improve our level of communication to prospective purchasers. The last two comments I want to make is we're constantly reviewing the, the, um, the effectiveness of those uh, of those tools and we're always looking for improvements. So at every subdivision that seems to get approved, the next information packages is one step uh, better than the last. And finally, I just wanted to uh, conclude with a, with a couple of next steps. You'll notice in the report, we talk about a number of initiatives that we're uh, presenting to you tonight for your information and one for your direction um, and approval, I hope. But there also is in the works a new standard form of subdivision agreement, which will go hand in hand with that Appendix B. That's working on, being uh, worked on by our legal staff and also development engineering and planning. And that report should be coming forward to you in the near future, as well as a report from development engineering on a revised assumption process, which was also one of the items that was listed in the original report. So that brings me to the conclusion. And what we're asking you to do, your worship and members of council, is to endorse the master list of conditions that are set out in Appendix A of your report to be used as the standard template to, uh, to be applied, again, as required. Not all conditions will, will, be effect, will, will apply to every subdivision for future draft plans. And also importantly, that you provide the, or authorize the Director of Planning Services to make revisions of a technical or administrative nature to those standard template as required. So things, minor little changes may be required from time to time, and we're looking for that uh, blessing. With that, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. You've got one from Councillor Bird to start. Yeah, it, uh, it came up uh, in a previous application tonight. One of the problems we have, and because the suggestion was, is we'll put that in as a condition of the site plan approval. I'm talking about the noise issue. The problem is how do we get that information back to subsequent purchasers? Rarely, of my experience in the past, and I can only speak in our order, where we put those clauses on, they rarely, if ever, get down to the second or third purchaser, who normally then will show up and say, I didn't know, or my lawyer didn't pick it up, or it's, it's not easy to find. So when the new subdivision, with those things that are unusual to uh, this particular subdivision would be they be highlighted or earmarked in such a way that someone doing their due diligence would pick up that there are certain properties within this plan of subdivision that may have uh, those conditions. It's pretty easy in the past to pick up where you've got an easement. People know about that. There's a, there's a public service easement for that or we have pretty good idea with uh, creeks and valleys and regulatory land, but those clauses, like especially noise, 
seem to have always created a problem in the past and uh, hopefully this uh, new subdivision agreement will highlight them. Is this going to be in this standard agreement, highlighted uh, unusual clauses? Yeah. Through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Bird, um, Appendix B, the, there are still a number of warning clauses that we intend to include in the, uh, in the standard subdivision agreement. I think they're all listed under condition 36 of that appendices and one of them is, is noise. So that the, and it was the solicitor the applicant that suggested we'll throw this in as, as a normal cause if we can't mitigate that. This is where it would be, Appendix B would be clearly indicated on the page, uh, on the thing, a different color or something. I don't know. I mean, the other thing is now, a, I'm not a lawyer, but a lot of lawyers don't do, I understand, title searches because they got insurance through companies like First Canadian Title. Yeah. And it rarely gets beyond the subdivision, uh, the subdivision or the developer. We're happy because we've sort of gives us the idea. Well, we've warned everybody, but it rarely gets down to the purchaser. Again, they don't read Appendix B of a subdivision agreement with. Uh, Councillor, if um, if I heard you correctly, you're asking about how does the how do the warnings travel to the second and third buyer, and. Uh, I'm not sure the matter before us, which is just the subdivision agreement, can really speak to that. That sounds like a job for another well, day. The, the problem ends up being is the concerns that we deal with subsequent to the subdivision are in the subdivision agreement and it takes some time. Councilors change, residents change, and come up and do some, oh, I, by the way, uh, there it is and it's tough to find. And that's what I'm trying to say, we gotta be upfront. We've done a better job in a thing, notifying people with the availability of schools or their expectations. But when we clearly uh, have issues with a particular or a problem that's likely to happen in the future, somehow the subdivision agreements and certain properties don't pick that up or easily pick it up. And that's the problem. It's not, it's not standard, but it, though it's buried in the appendices of a, a standard agreement. Right. Well, um, I'm sure staff will have to wrestle with that before they bring forward their next uh, report. Let's turn to Councillor Knoll and see what question he has. Um, thanks. Uh, the, um, some of the language around schools I'm just a little confused about because if you go to page 97, there are essentially two clauses which say very similar things. And I know it's a kind of a, a dim sum kind of uh, document where you're going to pick and choose based on uh, the particular uh, needs of that particular subdivision. But you've got S and Y, which essentially say the same thing, but one is exclusively for the Catholic school board and one is uh, ambidextrous for both. So um, is there some rationale behind, behind that? Uh, through your, your worship to Councillor Noel, again, you're referring 97 to the... Um, uh, Appendix B, which relate to things that are likely to appear in the standard form of subdivision agreement. There are other conditions in Appendix A. I'm just trying to find them. I think they're on page 89, which talk about various things that the school board would like to have up front. You know, I saw uh, those. I saw those too. But my concern is, if the if the goal is to make things as black and white as possible, why wouldn't you just have one standard clause uh, that that reflects both school boards instead of having one clause that reflects only the Catholic school board, another clause that affects both school boards, but essentially both saying the same thing. Again, through your worship to Councillor Noel, we have done that in the, in the um, master list right. the, of subdivision in conditions 25 and 26 lift both school boards. We've, we've merged them together to, to avoid the duplication. Uh, we're still a, it's still a work in progress a little bit on the standard form. Okay, of well then I'm just agreement. providing it as a note to be considered. Yeah. Um, also, this very um, minor couple things, when you refer to telecommunications provider, it probably should be pluralized because uh, there are multiplicity of them now that we're dealing with between Bell and Kojiko and whoever else comes out of the woodwork later on. And my only other question, this is just a, um, when you refer in pay, on item 39 on page 9, you actually refer to the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport by name. That ministry has had probably 40 name changes in the last 40 years, being facetious a bit. Would you, would it be not more, uh, would it be not better to be clear and refer to the ministry responsible for and give the, the legislation that you're trying to, um, that you're trying to reflect so that you're not, there's no ambiguity in the future about what, what ministry you're trying to connect to? Yeah, through your worship to Councillor Noel, excellent commentary, and that just brings to point the second part of the resolution that's in front of you, talking about administrative changes, because my experience has been that the, 
and say that the name of the ministry, they want that name as of today, but again, six months from now, it may change. Yeah, particularly that one. That one happens to be almost, uh, they, they don't actually write the ministry's name down on, on uh, granite. They actually put it on wipe-off board now yeah. so that they can change the name. I'm just being <laughs> facetious. Just notes to take into consideration yeah. as you redraft things. <laughs> Thank apparently, you. apparently, Councillor, it's not just a dim sum document, it's a dim sum world. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Treats on me. Uh, Councillor Giddings? Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm just curious in terms of what will success look like once the review is done and it's in place? Are there staff's cost savings? Is it faster for the proponent? Is it easier for us? Uh, any of that quantifiable at this point? Uh, through your worship to uh, Councillor Giddings, uh, I'd like to think that eventually it will be quantifiable because we'll be tracking um, things through our Amanda process, uh, turnaround times and things like that. I would like to think that the process would be more concise and clear, not only for the, the applicant but also for yourselves and again for future purchasers. So I, I think we probably can quantify some of this eventually. Um, it's we're, we're taking baby steps as we go along and I'm, again I think we're, we're at a good point right now as far as the conditions go and we're looking for your support on that. No, I understand, thank you very much. In terms of the feedback from the Oakville Developers Liaison Committee, and it sounds like meetings like that have been held in a number of municipalities, uh, they seem very anxious for this. Do they like it because of it's less red tape, it's faster for them? or it's just easier than 130 separate up-to-date, almost up-to-date things that they have to follow. Yeah. Through you, Your Worship, uh, to Councillor Giddings, all of the above. We meet with the uh, Oakville Development Liaison Committee approximately once uh, or four times a year, every quarter, and they've provided a number of good uh, pieces of advice to us. And the fact that we are now making it clear as to what they need to do the timing of which and reducing the number of conditions is making life a lot easier for them to, uh, to go through the approval nightmare, as I call it. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. If there are no other questions, perhaps a motion. Councillor Noll. We are uh, pleased to provide the recommendation, recommended motion on page 77. And just a quick comment. This is one of my favorite projects of the department, so thank you very much for this great work. Looking forward to the next draft. It's good to have fans and supporters for your work. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. Um, Council, there are no confidential discussion items this evening, but we do have the advisory committee minutes from the Heritage Oakville. And do we have a revision on that? Right. So you will have had distributed to you the additional recommendation number three in B that the mayor and town clerk be authorized to execute the heritage easement agreement. Is there any discussion or other uh, comment on this report? Is there a motion? Councillor Adams moves the revised motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that is adopted. Um, Council, uh, Councillor Giddings. Would you like a motion for the rest of the Heritage Committee minutes. Uh, actually, I, I I did get that whole thing from Councillor Adams. Uh, and that's what I thought I was calling for was the whole thing. That's what he thinks he gave us. So I'm glad you cleared that up for us. I would look for a motion to rise and report. Councillor Giddings, thank you for that. <laughs> Councillor Bird moves it. While Councillor Giddings was making up his mind, Councillor Bird said so moved. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on public hearing item one, discussion items two, three, four, and five, and advisory committee minutes item six as noted by the clerk. And if I could have a mover and seconder, we could adopt this report. Councillor Kahn and Councillor Grant, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? The report is adopted. Now, uh, under new business, um, I would ask if there is any, uh, any matter of emergency, congratulatory or condolence nature from anyone. Um, Councillor DeMoff, I hope you'll join me in congratulating The Rock on their, their uh, successful several more steps down the road to their association with the Hill Academy. 
It's bound to be good for lacrosse. You see, I, was, I thought you were going to congratulate my um, constituent, Blaine Manning, on being named an assistant coach, but that's good too. <laughs> well, I was looking to you for that. I, I think that's excellent. And I would take this opportunity to congratulate you, Councillor Demoff, for uh, 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 the way you've revolutionized bike travel in this town <laughs> with your prodigious energy over the, I mean, let me count the ways that Oakville Water, uh, Waterfront Festival at the, at the uh, Open, uh, it's been quite something. I've even had my bike tuned up and I now I now have my tires pumped, <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> I may yet wear that helmet. <laughs> I'm thinking about taking off the training wheels. <laughs> I'll get you a, a, a t Cycle Oakville t-shirt if we get you on your bike. It's, you can see them from space. <laughs> it, it'll, have to be, it'll have to be the, the Omar the tent maker size though. <laughs> but, but thank you for that. All right, any others? All right, then uh, if we could have a motion, a seconder for the consideration reading of the bylaws, Councillor Johnston, Councillor Elgar. Uh, this is the authority for bylaws 49, 50, 59, 68, 75, 49, and 50 as revised, as noted in the agenda. All those in favor? Opposed to Finney? The bylaws are adopted. That uh, completes our agenda. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. And it's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.